Morning everyone, today my group will be presenting about the contextual issues of implementing international financial reporting standard in emerging economics. I'll be talking about the contextual issues about convergence on Chinese accounting standard and IFRS. Junior will be talking about the economic factors on the convergence of the two accounting standards. Ian here will be talking about the culture and legal systems. Xing will be talking about the challenges on fair value accounting. Joey will be talking about the preparation of the accounting profession to exercise judgment in practice and education and training of accounting professionals. Here are the four contextual issues that affect the convergence of Chinese accounting standard and international financial reporting standard. The first issue is the political and economic environment. The second issue is the national culture and underdeveloped equity markets. The third issue is the, fair, the use of fair value accounting. The last issue is the pressing need for educating and training qualified accounting professionals. All these issues will impact the success or failure of IFRS implementation of emerging economies such as China. These issues also require the need to join effort between accounting practitioners and standard sectors in researching into accounting practitioners on IFRS convergence on the emerging economy. Now we'll be focusing on the four key issues which consist of the degree of convergence between CS and IFRS. Using a fair value and historical cost accounting in accounting practice challenges in the process of China's harmonization with IFRS and the essential capabilities of CS in the process of China's internalization of accounting practice. The degree of convergence between Chinese accounting standard and IFRS is important as accounting practitioners are deeply involved in the application of IFRS converging CAS. This study finds that Chinese accounting standard has achieved com convergence with IFRS on measurement concepts, however, historical cost accounting is still preferred compared to fair value accounting. Exercising professional judgment still remains a challenge to implement IFRS on China. Lastly, this study uses institution theory perspective to investigate China's IFRS convergence on a practice level. Now, I'll pass on to Junior who will be discussing about the economic factors on the two accounting standards. Hi, my name is Junior, and I'll be sharing with you about the convergence with IFRS between CAS and IFRS. So the three aspects of the three aspects of uh, convergence will be the historical cost value, fair value, and the implementation of IFRS. With the increasing internet internationalization of this economy, an average GDP growth rate of 10% per annum between the year of 2003 and 2014. And now we have the second largest economy in the world. Chinese, uh, China is a, gold, is a prime candidate for research, particularly with an increasing number of Chinese companies in the global market. The recently signed Chinese-Australia Free Trade Agreement will now, take, will now already take place with the strong relationship between the two countries to an even higher level. The studies on IFRS implementation in emerging economies mentioned above have consistently found that <coughs> Uh, by applying fair value accounting, a new measurement concept in regulated and less developed countries as it is will be challenging. In this market, the accounting professions is not well developed and trained, and which therefore struggles with exercising professional judgments. So in my next slide, I'll be talking about economic benefits. So the motive for Chinese government to Converge with IFRS were to assist Chinese companies to reduce the cost of raising capital in a foreign market as they do not need to prepare a separate financial statement. Financial statement prepared based on IFRS helps Chinese companies to gain legitimacy in the inter international capital market and enable international investors to better understand the financial reports of the companies from China. Consequently, foreign investors struggle to understand the financial reports prepared by the Chinese companies. Reform of the Chinese accounting system was placed high on MOF agenda. And next, I will be talking about the economic consequences. So, economic consequences has been a mixed findings of this effect of IFRS harmonization on the information quality of financial report across the country. Some studies documents that IFRS has, uh, has improved earnings report quality. The UAS has become a barrier 
for China in attracting foreign investment. This is because the US could not reflect the capital gain and profit distribution of foreign investment to the Chinese context. Accounting has little training in which the professional's judgment were rarely called for exercising um, judgment prior to 1993. Okay, so uh, I will pass on the, the presentation to Ian to continue with you. I will be talking about the national culture. There is a contextual issue in emerging economies and based on the article, an issue in China. Under the national culture, there are a few factors. Political, economical environment, legal system, language, and history. These are the factors that contribute to different culture in different countries. First, I will be touching on the definition of culture. Culture can be defined as a collective programming of mind which distinguishes members of one human group from another. This would mean that there are different norms and customs in different countries. Postadum ever mentioned that there are different cultural dimensions on national culture, and these are individualism versus collective, power distance, uncertainty avoidance, and masculinity of the country. In 2013, researcher Big Ben have found out that IFRS favor countries that are similar to Anglo-American culture, which is individualism, low power distance, high uncertainty tolerance, this is something that is different from China, as they do not possess this similar culture. In accounting subculture, it looks professionalism versus statutory control, uniformity versus flexibility, conservative versus optimism, and secretary versus transparency. This has also been researched, found it, finding that rule-based institutional environments such as China, which focus on uniformity and secretary are faced with huge obstacles when implementing IRS. As they focus on technical accounting rules more than judgment, which is not required in socialized accounting system. As principle based IRS require more professional judgment. This would also mean the culture of China is different from IRS culture. Secondly, the official language of IRS is English. And in China, it will require translation of terms from Mandarin into English as their official language is Mandarin. However, this might lead to a translation error on terms in IFRS and it will hinder the usage of IFRS in China. Language becomes an issue for accounting professionals to use IFRS. Next is the legal system in China. Different countries has different law and will mean that implementation of IRS will be different as accounting law will be different. Accountant will have to follow a different set of accounting law. China legal system might be different from the legal system of IRS, which will result in unfair law system. And this will result in different conversion of IRS in China. As different standard knowledge of law is needed in upholding the difference in accounting law. Lastly, is the political and economical environment of China. Some political rules might differ from upholding the IRS and also due to the economy of China. It may result in difficulties following the IRS. This is because the firm might not be able to afford accounting professionalism to attend training to learn about IRS and implementation in their own firm. So the environment plays a part as well. These are the few factors under the national culture that result in issues in implementation of IFRS. Next, I'll pass over to Cindy. Another challenge faced by emerging countries on the implementation of IFRS is fair value accounting, which is a challenging new measurement concept in regulated and less developed markets. In these markets, the accounting profession is not well developed and trained. Therefore, they struggle with exercising professional judgment. Research into the implementation of fair value in China found that fair value accounting led to unintended consequences such as earnings management and distorted financial information, which is a similar concern shared by researchers in the developed countries. 
Now let's look at the survey results on the view of China accounting practitioners on fair value accounting. As seen in Table 3A, Statement 1 shows 26 people agreeing on the usage of historical cost accounting. And on the other hand, only 9 people agree to the usage of fair value accounting, based on Statement 2. In Statement 2, we can also see that 15 respondents have disagreed with the use of fair value accounting. Most of the respondents disagree with Statement 3 on permitting enterprise to choose different measurement concepts for different classes of assets and liabilities which indicates that Chinese accounting professionals prefer a regulated or structured financial accounting practice. Although respondents agree to Statement 4 that implementation of fair value accounting is a fundamental change to Chinese accounting practice, the answer varies for Statement 5 on the compatibility of fair value accounting with Chinese accounting practice. Therefore, the survey result shows that historical cost accounting is the preferred measurement in China. Moving on to the survey results on the usefulness of fair value accounting for Chinese companies. Most of the respondents did not use fair value accounting in their company. In general, Chinese practitioners agree to Statement 3 that fair value accounting has led to unintended opportunistic behaviour of earnings management. They also agree with Statement 4 that fair value accounting improved the comparison and consistency of China's company report with international companies. However, most respondents are not in the support that fair value has promoted the transparency and credibility of Chinese companies' financial report to statement, in Statement 5. Now I will pass on the time to Joey, who will be talking about accounting practitioner. Hi, so I'll be covering the challenges pertaining to the accounting professionals, the implementation of IFRS in China, through the essential capabilities of the accountants. So my first point is the preparedness of the accounting profession to exercise judgment in practice. So by implementing IFRS, judgments are required. The lack of judgment may result in opportunistic behaviour by some companies to manipulate earnings. Furthermore, findings reveal that countries like China, which have a rules-based institution environment, often focuses on uniformity and secrecy, which may result in issues in implementing IFRS, which are principal case. These differences causes accountants in China to emphasize more on accounting rules rather than professional judgments as it was not required by them previously. As such, accountants in China are less prepared compared to others in exercising judgments. This affects the implementation of IRF, which emphasizes on judgments. So my second point is the education and training of accounting professions, which affect how they practice accounting. So Table 1 presents a summary of the characteristics of respondents. As seen above, the majority of the respondents have more than 20 years of experience and their accounting qualifications were obtained in China. As the respondents are experienced professionals practicing Chinese accounting standards, they might face resistance in adapting to IFRS as certain aspects of the reporting differs. Compared to those with lesser experience, those who are more experienced may find it harder to adapt to the new accounting standards as they might be too used to the previous accounting standards. This results in a greater time needed to adapt to IFRS. As for the education background, all of the respondents have obtained their qualifications in China. As such, they may only be exposed to Chinese accounting standards. This restricts their exposure to the national accounting standards. So, IFRS may not be as known to accountants in China than other accountants overseas. So, Table 4 presents results related to the challenges of China's convergence with IFRS. As seen in the table, under the mean and the standard deviation, Statement 1 regarding the unique Chinese institutional context and Statement 4 regarding the ability to perform fashion judgments due to China's cap capital market are the greatest challenge. This highlights the challenge of implementing principle-based IFRS when practicing judgments, fashion judgments, in an institutional environment of heavily regulated market by an authoritative government such as in China. So Table 5 presents results related to the key capabilities that are needed by accountants in the internalization of accounting practice. Based on the table, Statement 2 regarding the accounting specialization knowledge is most valued, followed by Statement 1, professional and ethical judgment. Similarly, both statements are derived from the training and education that accountants are exposed to. However, as Chinese accountants are taught based on the Chinese accounting standards, IFRS accounting knowledge will thus be lacking, and the lesser emphasis is placed upon professional judgments, which is a distinctive element of IRS. In summary, 
Differences in international accounting arises due to differences in accounting regulations. This affects the training and education of accountants, while cultural differences in China, which focuses on uniformity and secrecy, often affects accountants' ability to perform judgments.